So I'm going to talk to everybody about piranhas root borer and pecans. Uh, something we've been seeing down here in southwest Alabama. And uh, I think uh, the rest of the state should be aware of it if they're not already. Uh, I'd like to shout out to Brian Wilkins for uh, really helping me out uh, with this study and understand these insects better. He's the boots on the ground. He's our research associate down here in southwest Alabama working at the Fairhope Research Station. And he is my pecan guru. He's my my go-to person for all my pecan questions uh, and a real wealth of knowledge uh, that he has. He's been in the industry for a long time. So uh, kudos to Brian and uh, thank him for all the these data that he has shared with me and uh, pictures and taking me out to see these orchards with traps in them and all that. He's been really educational uh, for my learning. But we'll go ahead and move on if I can get my slide to move. There we go. Uh, so this is what I'm talking about, the Primus root borer beetle. Um, these beetles can put an orchard in decline, causing limb by limb a dieback until the pecan tree falls over or dies due to lack of water or nutrient uptake. Uh, these beetles feed on the root systems of a number of tree species. Uh, and because of all those alternate hosts, it can make them very difficult to remedy. So these beetles were first discovered in 1969 uh, on pecan trees in Albany, Georgia. And those folks in Albany, Georgia have been gracious, gracious enough to share them with the rest of us across the Southeast and uh, parts of the Midwest. Uh, adults are very robust, broad, but somewhat flattened, blackish to reddish brown beetles with antenna roughly half the length of their bodies on females and the entire length of the body on males. Um, lar larvae can be really large, um, fleshy, elongate grubs, creamy white to yellowish in color with three sets of small legs and a swelling behind their head capsule with uh, really strong black mandibles, really creepy looking creatures uh, crawling around in these soils. Um, as you can see, there's several species of these Insects can complete their life cycle on pecans, hickory, oaks. I mean, how many oaks do you see out there every day? There's a billion of them just down the street. Um, so their host range is wide. They like poplars, peaches, chestnuts, apples, blueberries. Um, basically, if it's a deciduous fruiting crop, um, they're likely going to be able to live off of its roots. Um, you'll see population spike in a pecan orchard when land is cleared cut nearby. So when they're taken out of forest nearby, you might see them start coming onto your property. Um, and for those of us in Southwest Alabama and South Alabama in general, when a hurricane rolls through and pushes a bunch of trees over in the woods uh, or on the pecan orchard, um, this loss of habitat um, will cause these insects to move to a more suitable location like your orchard, they walk up and they see a buffet, tasty pecan roots. So these insects have quite a long life cycle, lasting several years. Eggs are laid in the late spring after the adults emerge. Uh, so typically these eggs are laid near the host plant. So once the larvae hatches, it begins its search for tree roots within that wide host range. Uh, and the adult does a really good job of making sure that that offspring is close to food. Um, once they encounter the tree root, uh, they begin to feed and may feed for up to three to five years before crawling within a foot of the soil surface to begin pupation. Adults are, and this happens around May is when they're crawling, you know, up closer to the surface. Um, adult emergence seems to be staggered and there can be one or two peaks of adults, adult populations in a given growing season. Uh, time of emergence is quite tricky to nail down because it fluctuates year by year and location by location. Um, the sex ratio of these insects is typically six females per male. And once in the adult form, they get down to business pretty quickly because they only live for about a week. Uh, adults likely do not feed, uh, but they for sure are gonna breed uh, and lay up 300 to 500 eggs in the soil. A lot of times I'll lay these singly or uh, in clutches. Um, good luck finding the eggs in the soil. 
So the damage that's going to occur is they're going to, the larvae is the damaging portion of these insects. Um, they're going to be eating the barks off the roots, girdling them, and then severing them. And I've got some good pictures to illustrate what happens uh, when they are in the ground and munching on your pecan roots. Um, but um, a sustained infestation may result in limb by limb death. And you're gonna see a picture of that here soon. So my first picture, this is after a hurricane, pecan tree blew over. There you can see uh, what looks like roots sticking up out, out of the base of that plant. Um, most of them are severed off and this is due to prionus root bores. Um, this tree fell because the, it had such a bad infestation of root bores that it had no structure to stand on. Uh, and this caused the wind to blow that tree right over. Maybe it would have survived if the root borers had not been in the area. Um, it may have had a full uh, root system and been able to withstand the winds. However, that was not the case. You can see these roots are kind of clubby uh, and they just eat right on through them. Here's another picture. I'll let you guess which side of the tree the root borers were on. Uh, if you guess the top side of the tree, you're correct. Uh, there's hardly any roots over there and that's because they were munching away having a field day on this pecan tree. Um, and we didn't realize it until the tree fell. Uh, the left side's got a nice set of roots, not the best looking. It probably had some damage too, but there's still roots there as opposed to the top side of that tree. Here's what I mean by limb by limb death. Uh, as you can see, there's some green canopy off to the left there, but that main central leader has died back. Uh, and we've got suckers and low limbs coming out all from the base of the tree. Uh, that's a good indication that uh, the root system has been tampered with in some sort of way. Um, and this is due to prionus root bores in this case. So you'll see limb by limb death, just like this picture here. Um, we can see there's a thin canopy, you, the trees around it, especially this tree where I got part of it in the very top left hand corner. That's a really healthy tree. Look at all the leaf material. And then you look at the center of the picture where this tree has limb dieback. There's very few leaves. Uh, the canopy is real sparse. You can see a lot of wood in there. That's an issue. Um, and this tree will end up dying if the root borers are not taken care of and we don't remove uh, all of that dead plant material or dying plant material. Uh, and sometimes these jokers can make mistakes. Uh, they think they're chewing on a root when they're chewing on your drip irrigation for your pecan trees. Uh, and so they're gonna cause leaks and all kinds of problems. They can clog these uh, irrigation systems if the worms get big enough. Um, so all kinds of issues not just uh, with the plant roots. So you'll see a, uh, a gradual decline of the tree over time. The foliage may show symptoms of nutrient or drought stress. Usually these trees have uh, these insects feeding on their roots. If they have the insects feeding on the roots, they're gonna be thinner at the canopy like I stated earlier. Um, with that thinner canopy, you're gonna see a reduction in crop load and crop quality. So this is not only gonna impact the canopy of that tree, but it's gonna impact, impact the quality of those nuts you're trying to sell uh, at market or wherever you're, you're trying to sell them at. Uh, there is some hope. Um, because we can't nail down a specific date for emergence or time of year, I mean, we know it's during the growing season, but it can be different from year to year. Our best course of action is to monitor for these little monsters. Um, so we can monitor for them starting in May, and we're going to do that through August. Uh, when we start to catch adults in our trap, it's time to consider insecticide applications, depending on your tolerance level. If you don't mind having a bunch of dead trees in your orchards, by all means, don't spray. Um, you may see adults moving around just before dark during June, July, and August. Uh, during the day, they're going to be hiding much like the rest of us in South Alabama. We're hiding from the heat and humidity. They're hiding from predators. Uh, you can find them hiding in the leaf litter, under logs, other debris, any kind of pile of anything where they can fit their little bodies into to get out of the sunlight, get out of sight, so birds and other things can't come up and get them. Uh, light traps are very effective traps because these insects are mostly nocturnal. Um, I like the pheromone baited traps um, because they're bringing in the insect we want and not just everything that's attracted to a light. 
Um, males are attracted to prionic acid baited pheromone traps and females are attracted to alpha pinene baited pitfall traps. Um, the males are gonna be flying around, the females are mostly gonna be crawling. Um, you can find these black panel traps like the ones in the picture there, there on the right for about 30 bucks online and you're gonna be able to find those lures as well. Uh, and that's really um, our best means of defense against these things. We monitor for them. When we, uh, when we see a population, we start to spray and uh, try to get rid of them. It's gonna take several years to knock out these populations of brown or root borers because they take so long, uh, because they live so long in the soil, they're ever present. So the best means of pre prevention is to grow a healthy tree, keep it stress-free. Um, if we experience dead trees in the orchards, we wanna remove them as much as that plant material as we can, uh, as much of the root ball as we can, we wanna get it all out of there so they don't have a nice comfy home to feed in. Um, if you see dead limbs, you'll wanna remove those to help restore the balance between roots and shoots. We gotta keep that balance in check. The less roots there are, the less shoots we need. You also want to get uh, dead plant material out of the orchard because it's a really good point for diseases and other insects to capitalize on your tree's weakness. They can sense when these plants are stressed. Uh, a lot of times woody plants, when they're stressed, they uh, exude ethylene and uh, all kinds of insects can tap into that and they'll, they'll find that stressed tree before we ever would. Um, so try to keep your orchard clean. If your land permits and you're not on a super crazy slope, try to keep a weed free strip around the base of those trees. That's gonna decrease the hiding locations for these insects and increase insecticide effectiveness. Um, when the adults arise in the late spring, we need to be monitoring for them um, with these pheromone traps. Uh, as soon as we start to see them, we need to start making applications of chloropyrifos at four pints per acre. That's the insecticide we're gonna need to use. Um, as always, you're gonna wanna read the label on that insecticide uh, bottle because it's the law. Uh, I can tell you things all day long, but if you're going against that label, you're breaking the law. So be sure to read that label in its entirety. Um, this is currently our only means of control. Um, there's ongoing research. I know Brian's working on some stuff currently. He's got a three-year study going on four years uh, with these insects, just trying to nail down what we can do um, to keep them at bay and grow good quality, healthy pecan trees down in Alabama. So hopefully uh, he will have a eureka moment here in the next year or so, and I'll be able to give you an update and tell you all the great and wonderful things I've learned. Um, when we remove these insects from the orchards, uh, some of these trees will recover. Um, roots will regenerate. Um, a callus will form, you know, just like when we're grafting, a callus will form. Uh, and that's an indication that there's some healing going on. Uh, and so large tap roots and lateral roots that have been damaged will form that callus and regenerate new roots and shoots. So not all is lost. If you can prune back that plant, get your insecticides out and kill a bunch of these adults to keep them from reproducing. Uh, over time, you will see a gradual uh, rebound of your orchard. You know, it's not all well and good. You will have to remove some plants and you will have to cut some things back. It's gonna be added work, but uh, you, you won't necessarily lose your entire orchard if you act. Um, so with that, I'm, I'm done with my piece. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to call or email me at any time. Uh, I'm usually always available and I'll try to answer your questions as best I can. Thanks for having me. So Jacob, uh, I have a question, quick question. If uh, somebody needs the identification, uh, do they need to send samples or who do, how do we send, send samples? How do you collect samples? For these insects, you can uh, always, if you have, in, have these insects or you think you have these insects, you can always uh, collect some in a plastic bag and freeze them and keep them cold and bring them to your local extension office. And from there, uh, a local agent can try to figure out what's going on, or uh, you can always send them off uh, for identification to Auburn. Um, if you got alcohol lying around, that's always the best uh, way to 
um, store these insects for identification. I've got uh, a prionis beetle right here on my desk uh, that's been in alcohol for over a year that I was using uh, just the other day when I was making this uh, presentation. So um, if you think you have them, come find one of us, one of your commercial horticulture agents, and we'll be sure to ID that thing for you so you can you know, start your management practices.